Most people that I talk to that have undergone narcissistic abuse identify with being an empath, which is not just having empathy or being able to understand the emotions of another person, but it takes it a step further. And it's the ability to discern and feel another person's feelings in your own heart as if those feelings were your own. And while most victims of narcissistic abuse like this trait, appreciate this trait, I also hear that it also seems to cause a lot of suffering for people that have undergone narcissistic abuse. For example, they may find it difficult to stay in their own energy when they're around people with negative energy, whether they're narcissists or not. I've often heard people say that they desperately want to stay within their own energy, true to themselves, but they feel like they can't because of this empathic ability to absorb the energy and feelings of other people. And so for that reason, in today's video, I want to talk about how you can take your empathic abilities and become a super empath so that this amazing quality does not affect your emotional states but rather enhances your life. More often than not, this ability to be empathic started out as a trauma coping skill. For many of us that were raised in an environment that was chaotic or where we felt unsafe, we developed this keen ability to notice subtle shifts in people's emotions and behavior in an effort to find safety. Just like a child that might be born blind develops keen auditory skills in an effort to compensate. For the children that were born without safety, we developed a keen ability to find and notice subtle shifts in our environment, in the energy, in micro expressions to help keep us safe. So in a sense, it kind of started out as a superpower helping us to manage that chaotic environment, but then it became a weakness because when we became adults, we could no longer stay ourselves, especially when we were around difficult people, but even when we were not around difficult people. Right? We could still soak up other people's energies. It was difficult to be able to tell where one person ended and we began. And so then it became a weakness. And so in this video, I want to talk about how you can go back to getting your empathic abilities to being more of a superpower rather than something that is stealing your joy and happiness and peace in life. That being said, let's dive in. For those that don't know me, my name is Michelle. I'm a survivor myself of narcissistic abuse. I'm now a trauma-informed coach, a somatic experiencing practitioner, and the founder of the School of Transformation, where I meet live on Zoom every week with people from all over the world and we do the inner work to heal from CPTSD, narcissistic abuse, and childhood trauma together. So if my videos resonate with you and you want to join me live, make sure you check out the links available. So let's first talk about what exactly is a super empath. A super empath, like empaths, are individuals that have the ability to feel deep empathy, the ability to feel the feelings of others, not only understand them, but actually feel them as if they were their own. However, Unlike an empath who gets lost and confused as to where the other person begins and they end, so to speak, a super empath has characteristics that help them to be able to stay them even though they can still detect and feel the feelings of others. So let's talk about four characteristics that super empaths exhibit. The first being resilience. In other words, the ability to handle challenges and be able to bounce back after them, to be able to work through them without it causing them to completely lose themselves. Now, the reason that an empath struggles with this, again, one of the main reasons why we become empaths is because of a chaotic environment. So we may have a traumatized nervous system and a traumatized nervous system has less space for flexibility. So for example, let's say this is our normal flow of a nervous system, right? We have that ebb and flow, but when we've been through trauma, trauma causes us to constrict and hold everything down. And so afterwards, our window of tolerance is very small. We can't tolerate the same things because our nervous system has been overloaded for so long. Whereas a super empath, might have been in that place, but now has the resilience to be able to handle challenges without it shutting them down. The next characteristic that super empaths have is compassion. Now, don't get me wrong, empaths have compassion as well, but here's the problem. Their compassion 99.9% .9 of the time is directed outward. They can have endless compassion for everyone 
but themselves. Whereas a super empath still has that amazing compassion for others, but also extends themselves that same depth of compassion as well. The third characteristic of a super empath is a strong sense of self-identity. People that are empaths, sadly, again, due to trauma, do not have a clear sense of identity. And this is because of one of two reasons. One, they were either dictated who they were instead of accepted and loved as who they were. So they had to shape shift to please a caregiver instead of being able to be themselves. That's often the fawn trauma response. And so they've been in that fawn trauma response for so long that they're always yanking themselves inside out that they've lost who they are. The other reason that they may not have a clear sense of identity is because they were not allowed to be themselves. Their protective self, right? Their survival brain has developed a personality or I should say coping skills to help them to meet the challenges of the chaos in their life. And so they're living life as who they had to be to survive as opposed to who they were born to be with their authenticity. Whereas a super empath knows who they are, what they stand for, and they're not willing to change themselves to make someone else happy, which kind of blends in with the fourth characteristic that I'm going to mention, which is boundaries. A super empath has not only physical boundaries that they expect others to uphold and that they enforce, but they also have emotional boundaries as well. Whereas an empath often struggles with the ability to enforce boundaries. They might know what boundaries they would like to have in their life, but they struggle to be able to enforce them. So those are some characteristics that differentiate an empath from a super empath. I'm not saying this is an all-inclusive list, but those are four characteristics that differentiate them. When I first learned this information that you can go from being an empath to a super empath, I was ecstatic because at some point I realized that my empathy, as much as I loved it, I realized it was a trauma response. And I realized that as much as I enjoyed being able to feel this connection with people, it also was able to knock me off of my feet, confuse me and drain me of energy. And I didn't want that to happen anymore. So when I learned this information, I realized I don't have to get rid of my empathy. I don't have to suppress this, reject it, divorce it. I can simply upgrade it to being a super empath. So how do you do that? How do you shift from being an empath to a super empath? Now I'm gonna be straight up with you guys. This is the hard part because shifting from an empath to a super empath is not something that happens just by the passing of time. It's not something that happens because you watch a video or two and boom, it just happens because you have knowledge now. That's not the case. Just like if I realize that I've lost muscle tone and my arms are weak, and I realize and I have the knowledge, oh, I'm not working out and these are the exercises that I must do. No amount of reading about that and understanding that is going to tone my muscles. I gotta get to the gym and work out. Well, it's something similar when it comes to strengthening the, the muscle or characteristic of becoming a super empath. But since that's the hard part, let's pause that. We'll put that at the end of the video and we'll shift into why. Why it's so important and valuable to do the work to shift into becoming a super empath. I know if I don't have a strong why, there's no way I'm gonna try to do something that's hard. So let's talk about why this is vital. When you're an empath, you tend to absorb what's around you. The feelings, emotional states, the beliefs, the judgments of people that are around you. You're unable to stay in your own energy. You're very much like a sponge. And let me tell you, narcissists love when you are an absorbent because they never learned how to regulate what they don't like about themselves. For example, when a narcissist feels something that they don't want to feel, like shame, guilt, if repressed anger starts coming up, anxiety, depression, overwhelm, no matter what they're feeling, if it's an emotion that they don't want to feel, rather than noticing this emotion in themselves and regulating themselves or, or emotionally supporting themselves, they don't do that. They fling what they don't like in themselves onto other people. I did a video recently all about how narcissists emotionally regulate themselves with their victims. If you have not seen it, I'll leave the link here for you to check it out. But that's what they do. Anything they don't like, they fling on others. And how do they do that? By provoking you to feel that. They will touch on your wounds. They will try to do or say something that will provoke in you the emotion they don't want to feel in themselves. And so 
when you're an empath and you're absorbent like a sponge. The narcissist is able to use your empathic abilities against you to serve their needs of regulation. And so when you shift into being a super empath, you're able to notice the thoughts, intentions, judgments, emotions, beliefs of another person without making it mean anything about you. Again, because you have such a clear sense of identity. And then when they're trying to throw their emotions onto you, your emotional boundaries help keep you from absorbing them. You're so grounded in your reality and your self image that you're able to stay you. And when you do that, you shift from being a sponge to a mirror. And that mirror forces the narcissist to see themselves as what they're trying to fling onto you. They see it on themselves instead of having that ability to fling it onto you and think that you're the one with those negative feelings. In other words, that gives you the ability to force the narcissist to come face to face with their truth of who they really are without being able to blame it on somebody else or fling it on somebody else. They're left to carry it alone. That alone is a superpower. So many of us are susceptible to malignant narcissists because we carry around negative painful beliefs because of our upbringing. And narcissists actions touch on those wounds, touch on those painful beliefs. But when they're not there, when we have a different belief system, we become untouchable to narcissists because they stay who they are, but their actions no longer touch on painful beliefs in you. So when a narcissist tries to fling their shame on someone, it's a whole lot easier to do so with someone that has a shame wound. Shame being the belief, I am bad. So even if a person carries that belief unconsciously, narcissists poke at that wound until they get a response. But someone with a healthy belief system is going to notice the narcissist flinging their shame, but they're simply going to sidestep it because they know beyond all reasonable doubt that that shame is not theirs. So I think it's quite clear that it's obvious that how you are able to navigate difficult people completely changes when you shift from empath to super empath. But guess what? The fact that it helps you navigate narcissistic people is not the number one reason why you should do the inner work to shift from being an empath to a super empath. There is such a more important reason to do so. And it has to do with your relationship with yourself. That should be your number one reason why you'd be willing to do this inner work. Because you could leave all toxic people, but if you don't shift from being an empath to a super empath, you run the risk of being susceptible to these types of relationships in the future. You'll also find yourself stuck being highly attuned to the negative. Remember, being an empath is often a trauma response, and the biggest way you can tell is if you are always mostly 99.9% .9 of the time attuned to the negative or to danger. If you're unable to also spend time in the joy and the passion and the excitement and tune into those things and feel good about them, then your empathic abilities are there because of trauma and they're unbalanced. They're only attuning to the negative. And then empaths tend to be overly focused on the external and they're unable or haven't been able to develop agency from within. Whereas the super empath with the characteristics that they have are able to have that agency from within and that's real empowerment. In the end, it's your relationship with you that should motivate you to do these changes. So hopefully now you see the value of doing the hard inner work. Let's shift into how to do that. Because I know with myself, I would watch a video like this. I would feel so validated. I would feel so pumped and excited to do things differently, then I would go out to apply what I was learning and it felt like I was hitting a brick wall. It didn't seem to be able to work. And then that would only feed the belief, there's something wrong with me. It must be me. Other people can do it. Somehow this is my fault that I can't shift into becoming a super empath. And that's not the case. So let's talk about that. The first thing to remember is that it takes time, effort, and consistency to go from being an empath to a super empath. Just like it takes time, effort, and consistency for somebody to go from being out of shape to physically fit. And the time that it takes for people is all individual based on their individual circumstances. Just like with the physical exercise, what they eat, 
what their current weight is, what their ultimate goal is and how far of a stretch that is from where they are, are all gonna be determining factors. In other words, we can't compare ourselves to someone else. What takes someone else one year might take us two. What takes two might take three, depending on our personal circumstances. So I just wanna throw that out there. Rather than being overly focused with time, which only tends to aggravate our nervous system, it's really more important to start learning how to be consistent. One of the things we have to be consistent with is upgrading our belief system. Our self-image drives everything we do or don't do in our life. And most of us have a faulty self-image. Don't believe me? Make a list of the negative things you might feel about yourself right now due to the malignant narcissistic relationships you've been in or whatever other childhood trauma you endured. Here are some common ones. I'm bad, I'm unlovable, I don't deserve, there's something wrong with me, I'm unworthy. And while these beliefs are part of our self-image, the emotions they create within us might be unconscious, so they're in our shadow. Emotions like shame, guilt, fear, embarrassment, abandonment, being worthless. These emotions and beliefs, we didn't choose them. They were put into us. However, it is now our responsibility to upgrade them. The second thing we need to do if we want to shift into being a super empath is we need to develop the capacity for joy, passion, excitement, and creativity. Remember, as an empath, we tend to get focused only on the negative. There's no space for the positive. And that's usually because, especially if you're dealing with malignant narcissistic family members, you weren't allowed to be positive. It wasn't safe to have joy. It wasn't safe to be creative. And so your nervous system grew with the beliefs that that is dangerous. Well, guess what? That doesn't go away with time. Your nervous system wasn't born thinking joy was dangerous, that was created as a result of circumstances. Well, we need to undo that learning and relearn what we should have been taught in childhood, that joy, passion, creativity, imperfection are all part of who we are and we are allowed to feel all of the emotions available to us. The third thing we have to do to become a super empath is develop the capacity to be with strong emotions. Why do I say that? People that are able to navigate narcissists have feelings as well. They feel the same things we feel. They can feel hurt, upset, disappointed, angry, guilty. They can feel those things. The difference is because they were allowed to feel feelings, feelings are normal circumstances. So the feeling comes up and emotions are energy in motion, so the emotion goes. For example, if a narcissist does something rude to somebody that is untouched by narcissists, it's not that they don't feel that, ouch, that was unkind. They feel that, but then they're able to put down a boundary or they handle it from their adult self. Whereas an empath that hasn't done the inner work let's say they're feeling comfortable one day, but the second they're around a narcissist and the narcissist is rude, they lose that ability to come back up because emotions were not allowed. So if they're upset, they weren't allowed to be upset. So it's repressed and it's constricted in the body. So we really need to start helping our body to learn how to be with strong emotions so that when we feel them, whether we're around narcissists or not, we're able to allow them to come up and we stay in our adult self. We don't get flung back into our unhealed child pieces that become up and are very reactive and triggered. By the way, this is a great moment for me to let you guys know that this month I'm doing a free live webinar, how to be with the activation in our body, which is going to take place on, I'm looking at my calendar, on August 29th at one o'clock. It's a two hour webinar. Normally my live meetings are only for members of the School of Transformation, but I try to do free webinars every now and then. And so if this topic resonates with you and you notice that you're unable to be with strong emotion, come join us live. I'll leave the link here on how to register. And the last thing that I'm gonna mention that is helpful in order to shift into becoming a super empath is we have to undo the damage of the narcissistic abuse. For example, narcissistic abuse creates five main symptoms or characteristics in people. And they are self-abandonment, toxic shame, emotional flashbacks, a harsh inner critic, and social anxiety. Healing involves undoing what the narcissist did, 
because all of these things play a key role in helping us to get us back. Now, I know from experience that doing this inner work is not easy. In fact, I had a client recently tell me, Michelle, this is not for the faint of heart. And he told me, he's like, you know, it, it almost felt easier when I was only focusing on the narcissist and what they did that hurt me. It was validating. It felt good. But the second I realized that, okay, that person is gone and I'm still struggling and I had to look at myself, it was painful. It was hard. And so I want to acknowledge that this work is not easy, but it is so worth it. Otherwise, the narcissist breaks you and we stay broken. And who wants that? But when we do this inner work to shift from being an empath to a super empath, we get us back. We get inner agency and we no longer feel like we are still suffering from narcissistic abuse or trauma that may not even be happening in the present. So it is so worth it. And the good news is, is you don't have to do it alone. The School of Transformation is made up of members from all over the world that are doing the same work as well. We meet together live on Zoom. We have a monthly theme that we go through each month. We're able to track our progress. We're able to see our growth, but not only our growth, we're able to watch and be an eyewitness to the growth of others and it is so inspiring so if my information resonates with you make sure you check out the school of transformation i'll leave the links here for you to see if it's a good fit for you